Hello friends! We continue to monitor the events on the front lines of Ukraine and Russia as well as the news that has unfolded over the past 24 hours. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Let's start with the Zaporizhia direction. Yesterday evening another explosion was recorded in Militopol. As it appears, the Russians are restless there and the territory is preparing for liberation. Although the Russians still don't believe it and continue shelling along the entire front line to prevent the Ukrainian armed forces from regrouping and launching a new powerful attacks on Russian positions. For now, the situation along the front line remains stable with no active offensive actions. The Center for National Resistance reports that the occupation administration of the Parisian region is preparing for the forced mobilization of local residents to serve the aggressors. Literally, they have created 44 military registration and enlistment offices where all citizens of conscription age or reserve servicemen will be registered based on their place of residence. Today it is also reported that Russia shelled Nikopol with small arms artillery, three facilities, eight private residential houses, two outbuildings and a car were damaged. There is no information yet from rescuers regarding casualties or injuries. Additionally, four missile strikes hit Kamushuvaha, Levadne was targeted twice by multiple launch rocket system and 52 artillery strikes were carried out on Arikhove, Gulaipole, Zaliznichne, Stepnogirsk and surrounding villages near the front line. Currently, there are reports of 18 civilian objects being destroyed, including houses, outbuildings and educational institution and vehicles. During mortal shelling, a 27-year-old resident of Stepnagirsk was injured and in Preobrazhenka two men aged 39 and 62 sustained injuries. They were promptly transferred to medical personnel as reported by the head of the Parisia Regional Military Civil Administration. In the Vuhildar area, the Russians, as before, are trying to regain their lost positions by attacking in the Rivnopil area. They are reportedly suffering significant casualties there due to a lack of equipment, so their advancing rely mostly on infantry. However, the front line remains unchanged and the Ukrainian armed forces are holding their former positions. The counteroffensive in this area has currently been suspended and it seems like there is a reposition underway. We'll wait for further updates from this direction. It was also reported today that Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, was attacked by Russian drones overnight. However, later it was announced that the air defense system had destroyed all enemy targets in the airspace around Kyiv. The chief of Kyiv Military Civil Administration, Sergei Popko, published this information on his Telegram channel. The Air Force released a statement specifying that eight Shahed drones were involved and all of them were shot down. The military also clarified that the Russian attacks with caliber missiles originated from the Black Sea. In the Kherson region, the situation remains challenging. The Russians are very concerned that the Ukrainian armed forces will gather a large force on the left bank and launch an offensive. Consequently, they continue their bombardments using aviation and artillery. Strikes are relentless, but they seem unable to achieve anything more. Whether the Ukrainian armed forces will retreat or continue advancing remains unknown. We are still waiting to see how the situation develops. In the Avdiivka direction, Russia continues its attacks on the outskirts of Avdiivka and conducts a large number of shelling. Offensive actions also continue in the Pirvomaisky area, with shelling along the road leading directly to the Karlevsky reservoir. This is the main direction in which they want to advance for now. 
Further sounds in Marinka battles are uninterpreted, Shalan are ongoing, but the Ukrainian armed forces successfully maintain their defense regardless of the circumstance. The situation is complex in the Bakhmut direction as Russia has received additional reserves and is conducting offensive actions in the Khromove and Bogdanivka areas. They are also attempting to regain lost positions of the Ukrainian armed forces. It is reported that this, of course, slows down their progress. However, there have been no changes in the front line as before. In the Krimina and Siversk area, the Russians also continue their attacks in the forest near Krimina. Shelling is ongoing along the entire front line, but the Ukrainian armed forces are not conducting offensive operations here and the situation remains unchanged. In the Dvorishna area, despite its proximity to the Russian border, the Russians are not conducting offensive actions and are only carrying out shelling both along the front line and striking Kupensk. In the Svatova area, attacks on the populated area of Vasilevsky continue, accompanied by shelling. From Russian territory, shelling of the Chernihiv, Sumy and Kharkiv regions continue. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.